Hey there, it's me. Remember how I put a disclaimer on the last video? Yeah, well, I'm putting one on this one. If you are religious, this will offend you. So just be warned. It is currently Super Bowl Eve, and there are people downstairs who are laughing, having a good old time, just hanging out and talking with people, socializing, enjoying their time, watching the classic American tradition of football. And it made me think, what is the most American thing that I can possibly think of? Something that the country was built on, and just stuff like that. Well, there's one thing that I know this country was built on, that is named Jesus. We all know that this country, or the country of America, was founded on principles of the of this, of this thing. And why well, you may be thinking to yourself, why would you call that book a thing? Well, you all know that I only subscribe to one religion, and that is the Bee Stardom. Look, allow me to explain really quickly. As you all know, I started the Bee Stars religion in another video, and it is the only religion that currently makes sense. It is also the only one that can be currently proven. Which, you know what? That's great, because look at him. Look at him. Why would you not want to be in a religion with this guy? A glorious quote from Mr. Clean. Megoshi is my Jesus. The thing is, I actually started the religion because of the fact that, one, you don't even have to worship anything, which is great because you won't be confined. Uh, two, it's Legoshi, how could you not? And three, it's Legoshi, how could you not? Alright, in all seriousness, it's a complete joke. I really don't care. But you know what? I love Beastars. It's a wonderful show. You cannot beat it. That's aside the point, though. The reason I brought up Jesus at the start of the video is because I actually had a thought. And that was, it was thinking not about Christianity. No, I was thinking about something else. Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, the reason I brought up Jesus is because he he is in the Jehovah's Witness religion. And is the and he is pretty much, he's just the guy. You know, he pleased Jehovah, the God of the Jehovah Witness. You get my point, right? He pleased the man. He did well with his life. He was the son of God, right? Well, the thing is... The, I don't really know why they'd even, like, I know I understand, in in the religion, you, you shouldn't call him by his real name, but I'm going to refer to Jehovah from now on as the actual name that he is, Yahweh. Spelled Y-H-W-H, -H, Yahweh is the actual definitive name of Jehovah from the religion. And now, the thing is, it doesn't really matter, because I don't, and I don't, I think everyone knows this, I don't subscribe to any religion. I don't care if anyone believes in it, that's completely fine by me. I just like to know something that I can prove. Therefore, I cannot feasibly believe in anything like that. However, that is completely aside the point. I am only here to ask one question. What did Jehovah witness? Think about it, my friends. What on earth did Jehovah witness? And what did Yahweh do to stop it? In the religion of Yahweh witness, I know, I know it's terrible to say the name wrong, but think about it. It's technically the same thing, right? If it's the same name, and just they don't like you saying it, but if it's the same name, then... It's like saying salt as sodium. It's the same thing. Aside the point, the Jehovah Witness was actually started by a guy named Charles Russell back in the 1800s and is now ran by a bunch of people called the Governing Body who are a bunch of, uh, um, essentially they're just a bunch of guys who live up in New York. They kind of just run things and they just, they go around telling people about the whole thing and they just kind of sit there. The thing is though, Charles Russell, and because he was born in the 1800s, I don't really know if you know this, uh, he is no, he's he's dead, and because he kind of invented the religion, like Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, uh, we don't exactly know what Jehovah witnessed. Ergo, we do not have the same exact information as what Charles Russell had, and because he invented the religion, he must have known what Jehovah witnessed. So I'm gonna delve into this book of mystery and figure out what exactly Jehovah witnessed. Now I know that this is for Christianity, but here's the thing, it's essentially at the core, very, very similar. I mean, they both had Jesus. We will start with page one and work our way through there. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit, God, moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. There was light. And God saw the light, and that it was good. It was good. It says it was in italics. 
And this brings me to think, if this is in italics, it says it was good. That's emphasizing that it was. Therefore, it's no longer good. This is like looking at a song by the Beatles and saying this song was good, but it no longer is good because you've completely emphasized the word was. If you just says this song was good, then it would still be decent now, but this is purposely telling us that it was good. I think I'm onto something here. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and in the evening and the morning were the first day. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. There is no more firmament. Either that, or there are no more waters. Now this could just be a simple spelling mistake to where they took italics and emphasize the text but why would they do that in the bible either they didn't know what italics meant or back 2000 years ago when they pulled up google docs to start writing they knew what they were doing and god called the firmament heaven in the evening and the morning were the second day that makes sense. See, there is some logic within this. If you have the first and second day, they are the first and second. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. You hearing what I'm hearing? You can look for yourself in this first paragraph. Land is italicized. Multiple times, may I add. This makes me think that there's no such thing as land. I mean, if you're emphasizing land when there's nothing to really emphasize, it's almost like it's being sarcastic, like it doesn't exist. If we go back to the firmament thing, this actually reminds me there is a thing in the flat earth theory that is not actually a theory, believe it or not, because a theory requires evidence. And uh, get this. There's no evidence. But assume the flat earthers are correct for some reason that you would ever, ever possibly think that the earth is flat, like some Neanderthal. Well, here's the thing. If we were to assume that the earth was flat and that this is correct, and that the firmament, right, in the flat earth theory, there is the firmament, which is a dome surrounding the planet comprised of some unknown material. I know. Sounds reasonable. I mean, how else is the water going to be contained, right? Yeah, Antarctica? Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if the Bible or any other person will take offense to this video. If so, I apologize. I'm not meaning to offend any person here. The only person I'm trying to offend is myself because I don't know what I'm doing. Although I do know what I am reading because here's the thing that not many people know about me. Uh, I was hyper-religious for about a decade and boy that changed. We'll skip forward a couple paragraphs down to here. And the earth brought forth the grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and God saw that it was good. I think I'm understanding now. If God in Jehovah's Witness is to be referred to as Yahweh or Jehovah, then I'm thinking now that Jehovah no longer thinks that these, you know, seeds were all that good or that there was land. I think that God was a conspiracy theorist. On the 16th little thing, I don't know what I even call these. Are these paragraphs? Like, there's, there's numbers in front of every single one of these, but I don't know if those are paragraphs or those are... They're not lines, because number two is on line three. I'll just call them paragraphs for simplistic sake. Oh, wait, no, that still doesn't make sense. That still makes no sense. Oh, now I see. It's sentences. Thank you, Bible. Anyway, on sentence 16, I actually just found this. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Now... The thing is, you can't really take out the context, he made that, because that would mean he didn't make them. But obviously in the religion, Jehovah would have had to make them, because if he didn't, then who did? But that's not the point that I'm looking at here. On sentence 16, it says that he made two lights. But here's the thing, 
the moon doesn't exactly produce its own light. Now, it could just be taken out of context, but the thing is, the moon does not produce light. It's actually the sun that wraps light around the Earth that goes, bounces off the moon, and then comes back onto the planet, reflecting back at us. That's why it's not nearly as strong. But the thing is, this makes it seem like you know, the moon does produce its own light, because it says he created two lights. And if there's one thing I know, it's that astronomy is correct. I mean, it, there's no other way of putting it. You cannot disprove fact. I think I found the, the thing I'm looking for. If we look down here, we can find on line, or sentence 18, I'm sorry, Bible, you confuse me. On sentence 18, it states, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. Now, the thing is, it's referring to both light and dark. Now, here's the thing. I can do two things right now. Number one would be for me to go over here, right? Now, watch this. Watch as I become God. Oh, yeah, that's right. I control the lights. Welcome back to the God channel. Now, that was the first thing, but that is not true. I can't be God because I can never die. And as we know, in one of the Michael Reeves posters, who is essentially a deity, in one of his posters it says, God is dead, we killed him. No, no. The second thing is the fact that he's saying it was good. Yahweh is speaking of the fact that it was good. Light and dark were good at one point, but no longer are good. But where is the middle ground for that? I mean, how exactly are you going to get a middle ground for light and dark? Well, one thing is gray. And what do you call old people when they get old? You say, you are old and gray. And because things have aged for thousands of years, if not billions of years, of course he'd be old. We'll keep on this point, but I'll keep going. Now this is something that actually is pretty well rooted in science. On uh, sentence 20, And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in open firmament of heaven. Now the thing is, life did for mode for the most part originate within the earth's oceans it was a it was like a melting pot of just good material for life to form it was rich in nutrients it was completely chocked full of everything you could possibly need to create some of the most simple life possible at the time at least that's where most complex life evolved from i mean that's where the first eyes evolved in the ocean within fish which eventually evolved into four-legged creatures that could walk onto land and it just it kept going until guess what we've got it uh, monkey? Gosh, I think, so Moses wrote this. He's kind of like me in my writing. I try to make, see, I, I love writing. And, uh, one thing I'm realizing is, like, I, I tend to write pretty short stuff, so I gotta kind of lengthen out my, uh, pages a bit. Yeah, he writes some pretty quick chapters. I mean, look at that. Already in chapter two of the Bible, page one. Now, I did finish the chapter one, but I just realized something that I'm gonna go back to. It's actually, uh, sentence 25 of the chapter. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. This means that God... Sorry, I was thinking of all the people that pronounced gif as jif. Anyway, Jehovah here, that means that he was an avid gamer. You can see right here, line 25, sentence 25! Ah! On sentence 25, you can actually clearly see that he says creepeth. And get this, creepeth is only a couple letters away from the word creeper. And we all know that back then the writing was not as good, which makes me think that Jehovah or Yahweh must have had a big grudge against creepers in Minecraft. I mean, after all, when you start a Minecraft world, you technically do create the heavens, the earth, the waters, all the creatures, all at once in a Minecraft world. It all spawns in. And creepers, they're not something that you really want to deal with at night. Yahweh was sitting in his little dirt hut thinking, wow, I need to make this better. I need to make people and everything. And then he looks over, there's a creeper in his house. What are you going to do? You can't do anything because they blow everything up. Come Combined with the fact that God is old and gray, he could not withstand the explosion. Wow, I just turned the page and like, wow, 
he, he really does write quick, doesn't he? This is page three and already chapter six. Now, you can actually see that on chapter three, there was a snake, or a serpent, as this book refers to it as. And here's the thing, the serpent was is pretty much the antagonist of this manga, and, you know, they don't really like him that much. The fact that he could trick the two living sentient creatures on the planet is just baffling to me. I mean, if you genuinely look at this, this is, these are the two main, main living creatures that Yahweh has created, man and woman, right? Well, uh, here's the problem. If he created man and woman, right, and he also created the serpent, and man and woman have dominion over things on the regular planet, sure, this isn't the Garden of Eden, but like, why did the snake win? If man and woman were created perfectly, then why would they have the imperfection to fall for a trick? Yeah, did I mention that? The, uh, the snake, uh, there's no name of the snake. We'll just call him Snake. If Snake from Metal Gear Solid in the Bible decided to try and trick these two creatures, why would they fall for it? Why would they fall for it? This is leading me to believe that Yahweh was wanting them to fail. Yahweh put Adam and Eve onto hardcore mode. So Snake is in adventure mode, where you can't exactly interact with anything properly, but you can have an effect if you talk to the living creatures. Well, that would mean that since God's the creator, or Yahweh, uh, he was in creative mode, right? Well, that's the thing. That would mean that Adam and Eve would have had to be in survival. However, at the core, they would be in some sort of creative mode when they're at the top. So this is making me think that Yahweh owned the world's first Minecraft server, and Adam and Eve were merely admins. But the thing is, Yahweh was the owner. Now, Snake could not, you know, feasibly defeat God. But the thing is, if this is leading me to believe what I'm thinking it truly means, well, I'm thinking that either the snake somehow tricked God, which created the snake, so the snake would have had to been smarter than God, the one who created it. So, I mean, I guess that can happen, right? With artificial intelligence, we can make it smarter than ourselves. So that's within the realm of possibility. But, you know, the thing that I'm wondering is, did God not make them perfect? Or did he purposely make Adam and Eve fail? If this is the case, I figured out what they witnessed. Time to rewrite history. In the beginning, Yahweh created the planet. He also created two Homo erectus and a snake. This snake was more clever than Yahweh was, though. And when Yahweh realized this, he had a plan in mind. He knew that the snake was in adventure mode and God was in creative. But he knew that Adam and Eve, the two Homo erectus, were in survival hardcore mode but they had permissions on the server when the snake outsmarted yahweh he took his anger out on adam and eve because he could not deal with the snake that could not be touched and because god or yahweh was old and gray he must have been an angry old man so yahweh witnessed his own failure he figured out that he was not the smartest being that there was that God himself could be beaten by a snake. A snake, like a, like a slither, a slithery one. Yahweh realized this and took out his frustrations on Adam and Eve. And well, he put that tree up there. I don't know why he put it there, considering the fact that he could have so easily just taken away that tree and none of this would have ever happened. But no, that was the one unclever thing that God did. He kept the tree there, knowing full well that the snake would be able to outsmart his perfect creatures that would inevitably fail God. So let's recap. God invented three things. I'm sorry, God invented everything in this sense. But the three main living creatures that could think and that could actually properly understand things were Adam and Eve and the snake. The snake tricks them and then they get cast down to earth for all of eternity. It's not one of the other's fault they weren't made in a way that could understand. We all know that snakes are smarter than humans. So what I'm now realizing 
is I know what Jehovah witnessed. Jehovah witnessed the rise of the reptilians. As we know, God was a conspiracy theorist. We established this at the start. Well, one conspiracy theory that has been going around for decades is the reptilians, that there is a race of reptilian creature humanoid things that kind of rule things on the earth, like the Illuminati and everything. Well, I think we know now. Some people may say Mark Zuckerberg was a reptilian. Well, I think he was much more than that. He was Snake. Mark Zuckerberg destroyed the confidence of God, sent down his beings onto Earth, created the planet so all the humans could create Facebook and demolish the minds of the creatures of the planet. So now we know. Jehovah, Yahweh, God, doesn't matter anymore. He did something that is unforgivable. His one fatal flaw, no, his two fatal flaws, where he left the tree up and he let that snake be created to mess with them. He led to the creation of Facebook. So now we know. Jehovah witnessed the creation of Facebook. Well, I'm at peace now, knowing that the legacy religion still stands strong and that, well, it was actually Facebook that took down God.